Hi and welcome to the DE Physical Education Flip Learning videos. The neuromuscular system. Pre-task. Write down the definition of aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Explain the difference between the two. Pause the video until you've done this. Aerobic exercise. Aerobic. This involves air, so it's going to involve oxygen. Performed in the presence of oxygen at a low intensity over a prolonged period of time, e.g. a marathon run. This is going to involve our slow twitch muscle fibers. Anaerobic exercise. This is performed in the absence of oxygen at a high intensity that can only be sustained for a short period of time due to the buildup of lactic acid, e.g. a 100 meter sprint. This is going to involve our fast twitch muscle fibers. Key terms you should know before we start this section. Slow oxidative muscle fibers, a type of muscle fiber rich in mitochondria, myoglobin, and capillaries, which produces a small amount of force over a long period of time. It does not fatigue easily. Fast oxidative glycolic fibers, type 2A fibers. Fast glycotic muscle fibers, a type of muscle fiber rich in phosphocreatine, which produces a maximum force over a short period of time and it fatigues easily. Phosphocreatine, a high energy compound stored in the muscle cell uses fuel for very high intense energy production. Mitochondria, the structure in the sarcoplasm responsible for aerobic energy production. The myoglobin, a protein in the muscle responsible for transporting oxygen to the mitochondria. Aerobic work slash exercise. Low intensity, long duration exercise in the presence of oxygen, performed in the presence of oxygen at low intensity over a prolonged period of time, e.g. marathon running, suited to type 1 slow twitch fibers. Anaerobic work, high intensity, short duration exercise in the absence of oxygen, is performed in the absence of oxygen at a high intensity that can only be sustained for a short period of time due to the buildup of lactic acid, e.g. 100 meter sprint, suited to type 2 fast twitch fibers. Muscle fiber types. There are three main muscle fiber types. Slow oxidative, also known as slow twitch. Fast oxidative, also known as fast twitch type A. And fast glycotic type 2B, also known as fast twitch type 2B. Our skeletal muscles contain a mixture of all three of these fibers, but not in equal proportions. The mix is mainly genetic is mainly genetically determined. The relative proportion of each fiber type varies in the same muscle of different people. For example, an elite endurance athlete will have a greater proportion of slow twitch fibers in their leg muscles compared to an elite sprinter who would have a high level of fast twitch fibers. Also, postural muscles tend to have a great proportion of slow twitch fibers as they involve the maintained body position over a long period of time. Type 1 slow twitch fibers. These fibers have a low concentration speed than a fast twitch fiber and are better adapted to low intensity exercise such as long distance running. They produce most of their energy aerobically using oxygen and therefore have specific characteristics that allow them to use oxygen more effectively. The structure of type 1 slow twitch fibers. They are red, they are small, they have many mitochondria. As we learned before, mitochondria is ATP is produced to cope with a prolonged period of exercise. They have many capillaries, which create greater blood flow to the working muscles, more oxygen working for longer. High myoglobin, myoglobin is found mainly in the muscle tissue. It is a store site for oxygen. In times of oxygen deprivation, oxymoglobin release its bound oxygen to help create energy. And they have low glycogen. Their function is they contract slowly. They have a slower form of ATPase, which is then an enzyme that splits, releasing ATP. The contractility strength is also quite low, producing a small amount of force over a long period of time and they are fatigue resistant. 
Having these enzymes to break down fats, carbohydrates to water and CO2 so there is less lactic acid and fatigue. Aerobic capacity is also quite high. And anaerobic capacity is quite low. So they can work very well with oxygen, but they can't work very well without oxygen. A sporting example will be a marathon runner or aerobic events, long distance cycling, anything that is a long, prolonged time. Highly trained distance runners, about 80% of their muscles will be made up of slow twitch muscle fibers. You can't predict how good someone is just based on their percentage of muscle fibers. This also depends on their training and the efficiency of their CV and respiratory systems. Type 2 fast twitch fibers. These fibers have a much faster concentration contraction speed than slow twitch fibers and can create a greater force of contraction. However, they also fatigue very quickly and are used for short, intense bursts of effort. They produce most of their energy anaerobically without the using oxygen. And there are two types of fast twitch fibers, type 2A and type 2B. The structure of a 2A fast oxidative glycolic fibers, sometimes known as FOGs. They are red, they have moderate mitochondria, they have moderate capillaries, moderate myoglobin, and high glycogen. Here's a picture of a breakdown under a microscope of muscle fibers. You can see here that the lighter fibers are the fast twitch. The functions, they contract fast, they have a high contractual speed, high contractual strength. Their fatigue resistance is quite low. And their aerobic capacity is also quite low. They are suited to more anaerobic respiration released energy quickly. And their anaerobic capacity is high, producing energy aerobically and anaerobically. Some sporting examples of this are 800 meter runners or invasion game players. Structure of a type 2B, fast glycotic fibers. They are white, they are the biggest ones, they have few mitochondria, they have few capillaries, they have low myoglobin, and they have high glycogen. They have high stores of phosphocreatine. Their functions is they contract fast, they contract the fastest out of the three. Their contractual strength is the highest out of the three. Their fatigue resistance is the lowest. Energy is released in a quick burst, but the muscle tires very quickly. Their aerobic capacity is the lowest. They don't work with oxygen. But their anaerobic capacity is the highest. They rely on anaerobic respiration. Type 2B, fast glycotic fibers. Some sporting examples will be a 100 meter sprinter, 200 meter sprinter, wide receivers in American football, any activity that requires speed and power. A sprinter has 76% fast twitch muscle fibers compared to 24% slow twitch muscle fibers. Structural differences of the different types of muscle fibers. Take a moment to copy down this table that breaks down all of the different structural differences between the different fiber types. Within your exam, you will be asked a question to define the difference between the two. The more information you know, the easier this question will become. And then when we look at the long extended questions, so a 10 mark question, again, the more information you know, the easier that question will be to answer. Within the muscle fibers, these are broken down into motor units. So muscle fibers are grouped into motor units. A motor unit consists of a motor neuron and its muscle fibers. Only one type of muscle fiber can be found in a particular motor unit. Muscle fibers work with the nervous system so that contraction can occur. The motor neuron transmits the nerves, the impulse to the muscle fiber. So it comes from your brain, gets transmitted via the nerve impulse to the muscle fiber type. Each motor neuron has branches that end in a neuromuscular junction on the muscle fiber. Key terms you should know. Motor unit, a motor neuron and its muscle fibers. Motor neurons, these are the nerve cells which transmit the brain's instruction as electrical impulses to the muscles. And neuromuscular junction, this is where the motor neuron and the muscle fibers meet. Motor units continue. Each muscle is made up of many motor units and they vary in size. 
A small muscle that is used for fine motor control, for example, the muscles controlling the eye movements, will have motor units that have only a few fibers per motor neuron. However, a large muscle used for gross motor control, such as the quadriceps when the leg is extended, will have motor units with a motor neuron feeding hundreds of fibers. Here is a breakdown of the muscle fibers as part of the motor unit. Hopefully you can see here that as we break down from the muscle, this thing is into the muscle fibers, and then within the muscle fibers, we have our motor, um, motor units. You can see the purple one is number one and the red one is number two. So the message comes down the spinal cord, off the different vertebrae, for example, C3, travels along to the motor unit. The motor neuron then sends this message to the, um, to the muscle fibers. They then contract, allowing the movement to occur. The all or none law. Once motor neuron stimulates the muscle fibers, either all of them contract or none of them contract. It is not possible for a motor unit to, to partially contract. This is called the all or none law. A minimum amount of stimulation called the threshold is required to start a contraction. If the sequence of impulses is equal to or more than the threshold, all the muscle fibers in the motor unit will contract and move the muscle. However, if the sequence of impulses is less than the threshold, then no muscle action will occur, and the muscle won't contract and no movement will occur. Slow twitch and fast twitch muscle motor units. Motor units contain the same type of muscle fibers, so they are either slow twitch or fast twitch motor units. The brain will recruit slow twitch motor units for low intensity activities such as jogging and long distance swimming. If a greater force of contraction is needed, the brain will recruit fast twitch motor units for activities such as sprinting or powerlifting. Breaking down the motor units. Our body tries to be lazy. It tries to get away with only activating one part of the muscle least the least tiring part so type 1 if it fails then the fast twitch fibers are activated when motor units are activated they activate in the following order type 1 type 2a type 2b so when we go on a run type 1 is activated if action needs to be more explosive then type 2a is recruited and if even more power is needed then type b is activated your body tries to be lazy and it will always refer to type 1 as its first motor unit. Practical example. You go to lift a heavy bar at the gym. Type 1 is activated. If you can't lift the bar, type 2 is activated. If more strength is needed, then type B is recruited to lift the bar. This is why there is a slight delay in us being able to lift the bar as we have to go through type 1, then type 2A and eventually type 2B. How to increase the strength of the contraction. A basketball player jumping for a rebound needs to exert as much force as possible to gain the height needed to win the rebound. In order to increase the strength or force exerted by the quadricep muscles, one of the following needs to occur. Wave summation, where there is a repeated nerve impulse with no time to relax, therefore a smooth sustained contraction occurs rather than twitches, for example, box jumps. And then spatial simulation. When the strength of the contraction changes by altering the number of sizes of the muscle motor units, for example, squatting. Key terms you should know. The all or no law. So all or none law. Where a sequence of impulses has to be sufficiently intense to stimulate all of the muscle fibers in the motor unit in order for them to contract. If not, none of them will contract. Wave summation. Where there is a repeated nerve impulse with no time to relax, as smooth sustained contractions occur, rather than twitches. Titanic contraction, a sustained muscle contraction caused by a series of fast repetitive stimuli. Spatial simulation, when the strength of the contraction changes by altering the number and the size of the, mass, the muscles and motor units. Fast exam questions. So here are three exam questions that you can take your time and go through to test your knowledge based on the previous content. Here's the answers for the June, the January paper. Here's the answers for the June paper. And here's the answers for the June 2012 paper. Take your time. 
pause as you need and mark as you need to go on.